there, I'm Sal, thanks for checking out the video. Today I'm going to be walking through some tips for programming a wireless key fob to your first gen Toyota Tundra. I have a 2002 Tundra, um, but hopefully some of this information applies to some of the other models. Um, finding the right key fob for these trucks is way harder than I would have ever expected it to be. I did do a ton of research, and in this video I'm not going to try and explain all the ins and outs of figuring out exactly what FCC ID you need for your truck. This I'm aiming to pick up after you found the key fob that you think should be right. You've tried doing the pairing sequence and it didn't work. Because um, that's exactly what I did. I did a ton of research, found this key fob. I'm like, I know this is the right one. Went to do the whole pairing sequence and nothing happened. So I did some more research, found a solution, and I'm trying to outline that for you guys today. Okay, cool. Again, I have a 2002 Tundra. My first piece of advice would be registering your truck with Toyota owners or toyota.com slash owners. Um, you register your VIN and then you can go in and see the full spec sheet of what your truck came from the factory with. Um, you can see where your system was installed. There's like a few different systems that came on these trucks. Um, mine is the VIP convenience package that came factory installed and that includes the RS3000 uh, alarm system. So. That's what kind of steered me in the direction of finding this key fob and uh, ultimately you know, helped me work it out. So my key fob is BAB237131-022. So first things first, we'll have to remove this lower panel here. It just takes four, four 10 millimeter screws um, and then it just kind of pops right off. Once you have those four screws removed, you can just kind of pull down on the panel and you can see it releases right here. You can kind of come up and over the lock cylinder. And then it just releases like that. Next up, the hood latch release um, has two screws in it that you can remove. And then you can take this whole panel out and give yourself a lot more room. Just like that. Next up, we can slide out this air conditioning uh, like routing down here. It just slides right out. And you can take that out of the way as well. Okay, so this is where it can get a little disorienting, but if we slide under here to the right of the steering shaft, there's this box covered in tape, and then just above that, there's this other box. And if we look just on the side of it, you can see that green um, button. And that's the button that we're going to be pressing to program this thing. I'm going to try and take it out. You can still see that box right there. It's just behind the that air conditioning routing, so that's why we have to take that out. But again, if we come out slowly, you can see where it's tucked up behind there. Okay, so this is where I ran into my problem last time. If you look at the factory programming instructions, it just says press that button for three seconds, release, and then within five seconds, press either the top or bottom button on the fob. And so I tried that, it didn't work. So that's when I gave up. <laughs> um, but th that's where the trick that I found comes in. So if you come under the steering column like this, you can see these connectors over here. And um, there's this one that's plugged into the, like the base of this, like where the key goes. And then there's these other ones that in my truck were just looped into themselves like this. So I believe that because it's looped into itself like this and it runs back to the alarm system box, I think that this is just, the truck is bypassing the alarm system. So that's why it's not registering that the key's on and it's not allowing you to pair your, your new fob. So what needs to happen is you just unclip this one, unclip this one, and then uh, this clips into here and this clips into here. And then the two systems are connected and uh, you should be good to go after that.
One of the indications that you're heading in the right direction is that when you put your key in and you turn it to start, the door should lock. Um, that never happened before, but once I switch these around, uh, the doors lock when the truck's turned on and they unlock when the truck's turned off. So next up is doing a bit of uh, yoga or whatever you want to call it to get up under here and press this green button. You want to make sure you have the key fob with you and you press the green button for three seconds and then within five seconds you hit either button on the key fob. So one, two, three, release and then dang. Oh, <laughs> truck needs to be on. Rookie mistake. Truck's on now. One, two, three, release. Hey. Okay, cool. Now you can see truck locks and unlocks. One thing I would not recommend doing is pressing the button while the truck's door is open. It does this. And doesn't turn off until you turn the key on. So, kind of annoying. Don't accidentally press the button while uh, you have your door open. But I guess it's just, uh, I was reading about the system a little bit. And I guess it's just like a little warning. Like, hey, your door's open. But for, I think it's just more annoying than anything. But there you go. Okay, awesome. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. I'll have the RS3000 um, operator manual PDF linked in the description. It's got some other really good information about what the system does. Um, I'll also have the forum linked that I use to find about these plugs. Uh, it's got a ton of other good information um, as far as what fob you probably need for your truck and stuff like that. So I'll have those linked down below in the description. But thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.